Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton, and this video we're going to talk about Riemann sums and definite integrals. In the previous three sections, we talked about the indefinite integral, and we also talked about finding the family of antiderivatives for a given function. Now we're going to learn more about what's called the definite integral and how to use it to calculate the area under a curve, the average value of a function, and also several other quantities that involve integration. Although the concept of the definite integral might seem unrelated to finding the family of integrals when we found indefinite integrals, the two are very closely related to each other, as we're going to find out in the next section when we talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So in this video, we're going to use the properties of definite integrals to solve problems involving finding the area under the curve for a function. So let's start off by talking about how to find the area under a curve. We're going to use what's called approximation rectangles. It may seem like a straightforward concept to calculate the area of a region. However, we have formulas to calculate the area of a rectangle, a triangle, a square, a circle, or a trapezoid. However, what do we do if the area below the curve cannot be calculated using a simple geometric formula? So you start the area at x equals a, and you end the area at x equals b. So that gives you the boundaries. You also are above the x-axis, but you are definitely below the curve. Notice that this region is not a geometric figure, so we can't use a geometric formula to find out its area. However, we're going to use the formula for the area of a rectangle to help us find an approximation for the area of this shaded region that is below the curve, but above the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b. Suppose that we want to determine the area between the graph of the function y equals f of x and the x-axis on the closed interval, and it's very important that it's a closed interval, from x equals a to x equals b. The Riemann sum method can be used with several rectangles that are bases along the closed interval from a to b. And the sides of the rectangles will reach up to the graph of the function y equals f of x. These areas of the rectangles can be calculated and then added together that will form what's called a Riemann sum for the function f of x on the closed interval a to b. The area of the region that's formed by the approximation rectangles will give an approximation for the area under the curve of the function f of x on the closed interval from x equals a to x equals b. So notice that you have the same function y equals f of x in this figure, and you want to approximate the area that's underneath this curve, y equals f of x, from x equals a to x equals b that's above the x-axis. You can use approximation rectangles. So these rectangles, their bases are on the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b. All the rectangles, for simplicity, will have the same width. So each of these widths of the rectangles are the same. And then the height of the rectangle is determined by the function itself, y equals f of x. Notice that there's going to be some error involved with approximation rectangles. We want to find out the area under the curve. We're going to have some area that's below the curve that's not being counted at all with the approximation rectangles. But then notice we also have some error where we actually count the area above the x-axis a bit. So we have this rectangle that goes above the curve a little bit, and this rectangle goes above the curve a little bit. That's going to give us approximation of the area that we don't want. So to give you an idea of how to use the Riemann sum method, let's look at example one. Example one, the Riemann sum method, approximate the area of the shaded region under the graph y equals f x on the closed interval 2 to 5, so x equals 2 to x equals 5, by finding the sum of the areas of the rectangles in the graph shown below. So we have the graph y equals f of x, and we want to find out what is this approximation area from x equals 2 to x equals 5 that's above the x-axis and below the curve. For this example, it looks like we're going to use three different rectangles. We have a rectangle that starts at x equals 2 and goes up to x equals 3. The next rectangle will start at x equals 3 and go up to x equals 4. And the last one will start at x equals 4 and go up to x equals 5, and that's where we stop, x equals 5. The first rectangle will have a height of 3. The second rectangle will also have a height of 3. And then the last rectangle will have a height of 5. So again, this is an approximation for the area under the curve. We have some area that we're not counting at all that's under the curve, but we also have this area that's above the x-axis that we're counting accidentally. So why are we using rectangles? Well, it's a very simple formula to calculate the area of a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So the total area of each of the rectangles, the first rectangle has a width of 1 and a height of 3, so 1 times 3 is its area. The second rectangle will have a width of 1 and a height of 3, so it's also 1 times 3 area. And the last rectangle will have a width of 1 but a height of 5, and so it's 1 times 5 for its area. So 3 plus 3 plus 5, and that's 11 units squared, because we're talking about area. The units are squared. In this previous example, notice that the height of the rectangle used in the approximation of the area seemed very arbitrary, because we had the height is 3, then we had the height was 3, and then we had the height is 5. In the Riemann sum method, we can use any number of non-overlapping rectangles. So in other words, the width of the rectangles are all the same, and they all do not overlap or intersect each other. 
where the bases lie on the closed interval on the x-axis, so the closed interval was 2 to 5 in this last example, and the heights intersect the graph of the function y equals f of x, somewhere on that subinterval. What that means is that the rectangle's height will be determined by the function. So in the next example, we're going to use four rectangles or four subintervals to approximate the area under the graph of the function using the left endpoint of the rectangle, where the height of each rectangle comes from the function value at its left edge. In addition, we're also going to approximate the area under the graph using the right endpoint, where the height of each rectangle comes from the function's value at the right edge of the rectangle. So example two, area approximation using four rectangles. Let capital A denote the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals one divided by x, so you have a rational function here, the x-axis, and the vertical lines x equals one and x equals five. So this is the area that we're trying to find. So we want to find out an approximation for the area that's underneath the graph of y equals 1 divided by x, above the x-axis, but starting at x equals 1 and ending at x equals 5. And we're going to use four rectangles. Find approximations for the area, capital A, using four rectangles or subintervals with the left-hand endpoints and then also the right-hand endpoints. So let's talk about using the left-hand endpoints. Imagine that you have this interval from x equals 1 to x equals 5. We want to have all the rectangles have the same width. The first rectangle would go between 1 and 2, the second rectangle between 2 and 3, third rectangle between 3 and 4, and the last rectangle would be between 4 and 5. If we want to use the left endpoint of the rectangle, then we're using x equals 1. That would be determining the height of the rectangle for the first rectangle. x equals 2 will determine the height of the second rectangle. x equals 3 for the third rectangle, and x equals 4 for the fourth rectangle. The width of each rectangle will be 1 because we start at x equals 1, we end at x equals 5. So 5 minus 1, that's a width of 4 on the x-axis, and we want 4 rectangles. So the numerator is b minus a, that's the width of the interval from x equals a to x equals b, and n represents how many rectangles are you going to approximate the area with. So b minus a would be 5 minus 1, and we want to use 4 rectangles. So 5 minus 1 all divided by 4, which will be 4 divided by 4 or 1. So the width of each rectangle will be 1. Now if you want to use left-hand endpoints to determine the height of the rectangles, then that's denoted with an L sub 4. So left-hand endpoint, use capital L. We're using four rectangles, so subscript is 4. The area of the first rectangle is the height of the function, which is using the left-hand endpoint. So you are using x equals 1 to determine the height of that rectangle times the width of the rectangle, which is the change in the x values, delta x plus the area of the second rectangle, f of 2 times delta x. We're using f of 2 because x equals 2 is the left-hand endpoint for the second rectangle. So its height is f of 2, and the width is delta x again. So f of 2 times delta x. Third rectangle, same reason. You want to use length times width for the area of the rectangle. The height of the rectangle is the left-hand endpoint, which would be at x equals 3, times the width of the rectangle, plus the last rectangle. Its height is determined at x equals 4, because that's the left-hand endpoint for the last interval. And so f of 4 times the delta x for the width of the rectangle again. So if you find out what is the height of the rectangle, you plug in these x values, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, and x equals 4, into the function to find out the y value, or the height of the rectangle. So f of 1 would be 1 divided by 1 times 1, because that's the width of the rectangle, plus 1 divided by 2 for f of 2 times the width of the rectangle 1, so 1 half times 1 plus the third rectangle's length would be f of 3, the height of the rectangle would be 1 divided by 3 for the x value when x is 3, times delta x is 1, plus the last rectangle's area would be f of 4 times delta x, f of 4 would be 1 divided by 4 times delta x, which is 1. So 1 times 1 gives you 1, 1 half times 1 is a half, 1 third times 1 is a third, and 1 fourth times 1 is a fourth. If you add up all these areas for these four rectangles, you'll get 25 twelfths, which is approximately 2.08. So the area that we just calculated is approximately 2.08. Notice that these rectangles have the areas go above the curve. So this is what's called an overestimate for the actual area, capital A. Now let's do the exact same problem, but now we're going to use right-hand endpoints to calculate the area under the curve. So if you use right-hand endpoints, we're still going from x equals 1 to x equals 5, but the first rectangle would start at x equals 1 and go up to x equals 2, but the height of the rectangle will be determined by the right-hand endpoint. So that would be at x equals 2. The second rectangle will start at x equals 2 and end at x equals 3. And we're using the height of the rectangle determined by the right-hand endpoint, which would be x equals 3. And then we're using the third rectangle between x equals 3 and x equals 4. Right-hand endpoint would be at x equals 4. 
And the last rectangle will be between x equals 4 and x equals 5. And again, right hand endpoint to determine the height of the rectangle, and that would be determined at x equals 5. So to give you an idea of what area we're actually trying to find using the approximation rectangles with right hand endpoints, we want to find out what is the area under the curve y equals 1 divided by x, where we use four rectangles between x equals 1 and x equals 5 that are determined by the x-axis as the base of the rectangles, and the right hand endpoint determines the height of the rectangle. So x equals 2 determines the height of the first rectangle, x equals 3 determines the height of the second rectangle, x equals 4 the third rectangle's height, and x equals 5 the last rectangle's height. So we want to find out what is the area for each of these rectangles and add them up. That's called the Riemann sum method. So the width of each rectangle is represented as delta x, which is the length of the interval. We're going between x equals 1 and x equals 5, so 5 minus 1 in the numerator. We want to use four rectangles, so 4 is the denominator. So 5 minus 1 divided by 4, you get 4 divided by 4, or 1. So the width of each rectangle will again be 1. So the approximation using the right-hand endpoints will be capital R because we're using right-hand endpoints, and we're using four rectangles, so the subscript is 4. The first rectangle's height is determined at x equals 2. So you plug 2 into the function. So f of 2 times the width of the rectangle, delta x, plus the height of the next rectangle, which is at x equals 3 for the second rectangle, times delta x, plus the third rectangle's area, which would be f of 4 times delta x. x equals 4 is the right-hand endpoint for the third rectangle, plus the area of the last rectangle would be f of 5 times delta x, because x equals 5 is the right-hand endpoint for the last rectangle. So again, if you want to find out the height of the rectangles, you need to find out what are the values of f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, and f of 5, which were determined by the right-hand endpoints. So f of 2 would be 1 divided by 2. We're plugging into the function y equals 1 divided by x for each of these x values. Plus f of 3 is 1 third times delta x is still 1. Plus f of 4 is 1 fourth times 1 for delta x. Plus f of 5, which is 1 fifth times delta x, which is 1. So if you add up these areas of these four rectangles areas, you will have 77 divided by 60, which is approximately 1.28. So the area that we just found out is that these four rectangles areas added together is about 1.28. Notice that this gives us an underestimate for the actual area under the curve y equals 1 divided by x because we have some area that we're not actually finding that's underneath the curve but not counted by approximation rectangles areas. So anytime that you're using approximation rectangles to approximate the area under a curve, there's going to be some error involved. The area in the approximation is the absolute value of the difference between the approximation and the actual value of the area. However, neither the actual value of the area nor the error in the approximation are known. However, it's still possible to calculate the error bound. In other words, how large can the error actually be, which is a positive real number that the error is less than or equal to. So this is called the error bounds for an approximation of area using left or right hand endpoints. If f of x is a positive function, that means the function is entirely above the x-axis and is either increasing or decreasing on the closed interval a to b, then we have the following. The absolute value of f of b minus f of a, so the difference between the y values at, at x equals b and x equals a, you take the absolute value of that difference, times the width of each rectangle, which is b minus a, all divided by n, is an error bound for the approximation of the area under the curve y equals f of x, and above the x-axis, between x equals a and x equals b, using left or right-hand endpoints. So to give you an idea of how to actually use this theorem, in the previous example, an error bound for the area under the curve y equals 1 divided by x from x equals 1 to x equals 5, if we used right-hand endpoints, we had an approximation that the area was 1.28. So the error would be the absolute value of the actual area of the area under the curve minus the approximation that we found, r sub 4, which was 1.28, less than this error bound. So it's the difference between the y values at x equals b and x equals a. So it's the absolute value of f of 5 minus f of 1 times the width of each rectangle, which was times 5 minus 1 in the numerator, all divided by 4, which is equal to the absolute value. f of 5 is 1 fifth when you plug x equals 5 into the function y equals 1 divided by x minus f of 1, which is 1 divided by 1 or just 1, times each rectangle had a width of 4 divided by 4 or just 1, and so if you approximate this, you'll get negative 4 fifths inside the absolute value, so that's positive 4 fifths, times 1, or 4 fifths, which is 0.8. So 0 0.8 is called an error bound for the approximation of the area under the graph by the Riemann sums using right-hand endpoints with four rectangles.
Notice if we want to have a better approximation for the area under the curve, we don't have to use just four rectangles. If we increase the number of rectangles, which means each rectangle will have a smaller width, then we can actually get a, a better approximation for the area under the curve. However, there's a limit to how much work we actually want to do by hand when we approximate the area under the curve using approximation rectangles. The sums of the areas of the approximation rectangles are called Riemann sums. So the definition of Riemann sum and sigma notation. A Riemann sum for a function f of x over a closed interval from x equals a to x equals b is the sum of the areas of the rectangles that approximates the area under the curve from x equals a to x equals b. We partition or divide up the interval x equals a to x equals b into n rectangles or n subintervals with each subinterval the base of one approximating rectangle. So the width of each rectangle is the width of each subinterval. The width of each subinterval is equal to delta x, which is the width of the entire interval, b minus a, divided by n, which is how many rectangles or subintervals we're dividing the closed interval up into. The height of each rectangle comes from the function y equals f of x and is evaluated at some point, c sub i, in each subinterval. We use the left-hand endpoints and we use the right-hand endpoints. So the Riemann sum is denoted this way. It's capital S sub n, so capital S representing sum. The subscript n represents how many rectangles or subintervals that we're going to use to approximate the area under the curve. And it's determined this way. It's the height of the first subinterval times the width of that first rectangle plus the height of the second rectangle or subinterval times the width of that next rectangle. And you have n rectangles. So this will continue up into the last rectangle, which is f of c sub n times delta x again. The left and the right sums are special cases of the Riemann sums where the c sub i is the left endpoint or the right endpoint of each subinterval. And then to talk about sigma notation, because we're talking about a sum, we can use sigma notation as a way to compactly represent a sum of terms, such as we have in a Riemann sum. The uppercase Greek letter sigma is used to represent a sum in mathematics or statistics. So you have capital S sub n is the sum of each of these terms, and they all look the same. F of c sub i determines the height of the rectangle or subinterval, and the delta x is the width of the rectangle or subinterval. And you want to add up, starting at where the subscript is 1, because that was c sub 1 is the first subscript, and then you want to go up to where the subscript stops at n, because that was the last subscript, c sub n. So this just means f of c1 delta x plus f of c2 delta x plus f of c3 delta x plus f of c4 delta x, and you stop when you get to n, whatever that n is. How many rectangles are you dividing the subinterval up into? The i in the Riemann sum is called an index, and it represents a counter because you count up one, then two, then three, then four, and so on, similar to the one that you may have seen in a computer programming class. And then one note, if f of x has both positive and negative values, then some terms in the Riemann sum will represent areas of the rectangles, and others represent the negative values of the areas of the rectangles depending on the sign of f of c sub i. So let's take a look at example three. Example three, calculating Riemann sums. Consider the function f of x equals two subtract x squared on the closed interval zero to five. We partition the interval zero to five into five subintervals or five rectangles with each equal width. Let c sub i represent the midpoint of each subinterval and calculate the corresponding Riemann sum, capital S sub five. So let's take a look at the graph first. We want to find out what is the graph of f of x equals 2 subtract x squared look like. It looks like this parabola. We want to start at x equals 0 and go up to x equals 5 on the x-axis. So notice in the graph that you want to find out the area that's bounded by the graph and the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals 5. You're going to have some values for the areas that are above the x-axis, and you're going to have some areas for the areas of rectangles below the x-axis. So what this previous note is saying is that if you want to calculate the area that's above the x-axis, that's considered positive. But if you want to calculate the area that's below the x-axis, that's considered a negative value. It depends on the sign of the y values for the function. So let's approximate this area using Riemann sums. This time we want to use five rectangles or five subintervals on the interval 0 to 5. So let's find out the width of each rectangle first. So delta x would be the width of the interval. That would be 0 to 5, so 5 minus 0 all divided by 5 because we want to use 5 rectangles or 5 subintervals this time. And so 5 minus 0 is 5 in the numerator, divided by 5, which will give you 1. So the width of each rectangle will be 1. However, this time we're not using this left endpoint or the right endpoint to determine the height of the rectangles. We want to use the midpoint of each subinterval or rectangle. 
So let's find out what x values are we actually using for the approximation for the height of the rectangles. We have this interval, x equals 0 to x equals 5. We know that each rectangle has a width of 1, so partition this up into 5 tick marks. So you have the first rectangle going between 0 and 1, the second rectangle between 1 and 2, third rectangle between 2 and 3, and so on, up until the last rectangle is between 4 and 5. But we're not using the left endpoint or the right endpoint, we're using the midpoint. So what's the midpoint between 0 and 1? It would be halfway. So the x value would be a half. Between x equals 1 and x equals 2, what's halfway between 1 and 2? It would be 3 halves, or 1.5. And then same thing for the other midpoints. Between 2 and 3, the midpoint would be 2 and a half. The midpoint between 3 and 4 would be 3 and a half. And the midpoint between 4 and 5 would be 4 and a half. So I've just represented these as fractions. 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves, and 9 halves. And now let's calculate the Riemann sum. So the Riemann sum would be capital S, the subscript will be 5 because we're using 5 subintervals or 5 rectangles, where the subscripts start at 1 for the first rectangle, and we go up to 5 rectangles for the subscripts. The height of the rectangle is F of C sub I, and we're going to be using C sub I as the midpoint for each rectangle, and the delta X is representing the width of each rectangle. So we would have F of C sub 1 delta X plus F of C sub 2 delta X, plus f of c sub 3 delta x, plus f of c sub 4 delta x, plus f of c sub 5 delta x. This sigma notation is just a compact way of saying this entire sum. So the Riemann sum using midpoint c sub 1, c sub 2, c sub 3, c sub 4, and c sub 5 would be f of 0 0.5, f of a half times the width of the rectangle would be 1. The second rectangle would be f of 1.5 times the width of the rectangle would be 1. Then f of 2.5 times 1 plus f of 3.5 times 1, and then f of 4.5 times 1. So the 0.5, the 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5 are the midpoints of each rectangle. So now to find out what are the height of the rectangles, you plug in 0 0.5 into the function. You plug 1.5 into the function, 2.5 into the function, 3.5 into the function, and then 4.5 into the function. So the function was y equals 2 subtract x squared. So f of 0 0.5 would be 2 subtract 0 0.5 for the x, and then square it. And then the width of the rectangle is 1. So 2 subtract 0.5 squared times 1 would be the area of the first rectangle using midpoints. The second rectangle would be an area of f of 1.5, that's 2 subtract x squared, or 1.5 squared, times the width of the rectangle is 1. And you do the same thing for the third, fourth, and fifth rectangles. You would have 2 minus 2.5 squared, all times 1. 2 minus 3.5 squared all times 1, and then 2 minus 4.5 squared all times 1. So to calculate these values for the height of the rectangles, you would have 1.75 times 1, negative 0.25 times 1, negative 4.25 times 1, negative 10.25 times 1, and then finally negative 18.25 times 1. So notice that the first rectangle, the y values are positive because the function was above the x-axis. But notice with these last four rectangles, the y values are negative because the function is below the x-axis at the midpoint for each of these last four rectangles. And this approximation will come up as negative 31.25. So the area that is bounded by the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals 5, if we use midpoints, and if we use five rectangles or five subintervals, is approximately negative 31.25. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we've talked about how to calculate Riemann sums using left endpoints, right endpoints, and also midpoints for the area that's under the curve bounded by the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b on the closed interval using approximation rectangles. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the definite integral and the limit of a Riemann sum.